Hey guys, what's up? We're back with another wine video. And not just another wine video, this is going to be an Astro Wine video. Yup, you heard that right. If you watch a few videos back, I presented to you Taurus Season Wines. I call them Taurus Season Wines because as a true Taurus, it was my way of celebrating and being indulgent. But a question came up and it really got me thinking, if Zodiac signs were wines, what wines would be representing them if this video turns out well i just might do this monthly so to start with happy gemini season both my moon and rising signs are under gemini so if you get offended as a gemini don't worry i'm just as gemini as you <laughs> all right so before we get into the reveal of what our gemini season wine will be Let's go briefly into the characteristics of the Gemini. First and foremost, the Gemini is an air sign, like the element suggests. So there is a tendency to be all over the place. So yes, as air, they're kind of hard to tie down. And I guess the primary trait that people think about when they say Gemini would be twins. The Spanish word for a twin is actually gemelos. So Gemini represented by twins tend to have a duality of personalities. Not that they're two-faced or anything, but they have different characteristics of how they tend to bring about themselves. So some people may find this a little hard or maybe off-putting about Geminis. I should know. Um, I guess in a way they, they can tend to be flaky or you might be getting a, a different set of reactions, a different set of personalities as what you were expecting. So with Geminis, that would be the primary thing about them is this duality. And with that duality, I present to you our Gemini Season Wine which is, can you guess? It's a, it's a rosé. So why a rosé? Obviously a rosé is between white wines and red wines. And I think a rosé perfectly depicts the duality of the Gemini. I mean, as a rosé, you can have a light one that would lean towards white wines more. So they're light, refreshing, or you could have a heavier, fuller bodied rosé, which is closer to red. And the most popular way to make rosé is actually similar to how winemakers make red wine. And that process is by leaving the grapes on for a few hours or even up to a few days during the maceration process. So the red skin of the grapes actually marinates for a few days before it's filtered out. Whereas with red wine, this is actually left in. Alright, with that, let's taste our rosé today. So this is a Spanish rosé from Viña Esmeralda. It's a 2018 vintage. So this Spanish rosé is from Penedes. If you look it up, it actually comes from Catalonia. And Penedes is a short one-hour ride from Barcelona. It's special to me because it was the first vineyard that I was able to go to. Not that I've gone to many vineyards or wine region. I've only gone to three actually. And Penedes is known for making cava, the Spanish equivalent of champagne. So this rosé is made up of a varietal called Grenache. And Grenache is a popular red wine. Also in a previous video, we tried the Cebu Pacific wines and the rosé there came from France, also a Grenache. So let's see how the Spanish do it differently. My experience with rosés is that they're usually more pink when they're all together in the bottle, but when you pour them, they look a little lighter, like a yellowish color, hints of pink. Ooh, smells so good. On the nose, I can smell a lot of honey, a little bit of melon. That honey melon scent is really dominating. Notes of strawberries tend to be there on the nose, so let's go in. That's nice. Strawberry honeysuckle. It's a very gentle type of sweetness. Gentle citrus. And as the name suggests, it's a bit rosy. If you can think about how rose petals smell in water, it has that smell. It's lovely. This rosé is perfectly that. I, I say a perfect rosé because you really can't say that it's a white wine, but you really can't say that it's red as well. I mean, nothing heavy about it. I guess what I like about it too is um, it's an old world wine. It shows a lot of restraint as an old world wine. And personality restraints are actually a very Gemini character. That's the struggle of my girlfriend with me. I mean, like a rosé, Geminis tend to be very friendly, very social, very outgoing. 
but they do actually keep a lot with them themselves as well. After all, they are an air sign. They live a lot in their heads as well. There's something in this wine that is still waiting to be unearthed and discovered. And I think that's the way with Geminis. I mean, you think you have them figured out and they're social, but, but they have a lot more thoughts. They're a lot deeper. And again, it's the duality of personalities. <laughs> in the spirit of duality, I am coming up here with another wine. Also a rosé. So yes, so why stop at one when Gemini pushes you to be two? Anyway, so this is a South African rosé from Cape Town from Durbanville Hills. This is one of the larger producers of wine in South Africa. Old World Rosé versus New World Rosé. The Old World, the Spanish one, it's a bit more pink. Do you guys agree? Got a different glass for this. And let's try it. You see that in color, this is lighter. Off the bat, I smell a bit of flint. It's a bit minerally. I always like to use the description of the burnt match flavor. You know that whiff that you get once you light the match? There's a bit of that. Um, smoky, oaky notes. For me, actually, that's the dominating flavor. Whereas the previous rosé was a bit more subtle. Like I said, it was gentle. This one feels a bit more aggressive. There you go. I. I could smell the strawberries now. And then I think there's a, a, a stronger sourness, similar to Sauve Blanc. I feel like it would have a creamy aftertaste. Mm. Okay. It has that flinty burnt match taste. I think this is a little more white wine, except that it has a lingering sweeter finish. Um, by the way, so I forgot to mention this is a rosé made out of Merlot. It's different. Like I said, it's a little bit like Sauve Blanc. You taste those light notes of pear grapefruit, but they don't linger. Rather than the sour finish that Sauve Blanc would deliver, this is a lot sweeter. Maybe too sweet for some people actually, but um, for me it's right on the border of sweetness. Which do I like better? In true Gemini form? It's actually hard to say. You know, you have one that's kind of gentle and deep. This rosé, it's a bit more aggressive, it's a bit stronger. So how would I rate these? I'm having a hard time judging which I like better. I'm gonna give both an 8.2 out of 10. So today's wines were bought from thirst.ph, no affiliate code. No discount code this time, no benefit for me, but just promoting this in case you guys are curious and you're interested to buy. The Spanish one is a little bit more expensive, um, a little over 500 pesos, while the South African one is a little under 400 pesos. If you're trying to save money, the South African one will do, but give yourself a treat and try the Spanish one too. Like I asked last time, do you already know your sun in rising? You can actually find this out on the internet. As long as you know your time of birth and the place of birth, then you can definitely figure out your moon and rising. Of course, this is different from your main zodiac sign, which is your sun. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. And if you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And cheers. Happy Gemini season.